Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. And today I have the FT Aviator, which is a brand new controller that works with a variety of DJI drones. Uh, it's from a company called Fluidity and we're gonna check it out, so stay tuned. So before we get started, I want to mention two things. If you like drones and drone technology, please hit that subscribe button and hit the alert bell so you'll get an alert when there's a new video. And secondly, if you really like drones and you want to meet up with other drone pilots and other YouTubers who do stuff with drones and cameras and such, come to Spin Up. It is going to be in Austin, Texas on October 19th. That is 2019 this year, coming up in just a little while. To learn more, go to dronespinup.com with all the information, registration information. We're going to be giving stuff away, including one of these actually at Spin Up, so go check it out. So before we get too far into this, I want to talk a little bit about the guy who designed this thing. His name is Scott Perizinski. He is a NASA astronaut who has been on five shuttle missions up into space five times and done seven spacewalks. He's also a uh, medical doctor. And I think what uh, actually inspired him to design this thing was the controls that you use on a drone, the two stick controls, are very similar to a um, video game. He felt that the controls they have in these uh, higher end things like moving uh, robotic space arms on the space shuttle or uh, doing robotic surgery were more, more intuitive and fixed wing airplanes, right? So he designed this thing to be intuitive where everything you do just kind of makes sense in your brain. Now I had an opportunity to talk with Scott a little bit before um, I took this out to fly it, asked him a few questions about why he invented this. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of clips from that interview I did with him. So, so this, you know, this I've I've been in the cockpit of several airplanes, and this looks very much like the yoke of a of an aircraft, right? I mean, is that right. is that what you were going for? Was that intuitive? You know, push forward to dive, pull back to climb, uh, yeah. twist to yaw kind of thing. Yeah, as we say, you know, houses get bigger, houses get smaller. Is the, you know, kind of, <laughs> right. uh, it's a little bit different. Um, so what we have here is uh, a dynamic balance between your index finger and your thumb. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, uh, you yeah. pull up with your index finger, you climb to descend, you press down with your thumb. And so that that really precise control of your altitude and then to be able to, to move in, in all four degrees of freedom of motion at the same time you know, what we call a multi-axis maneuver, but know when you're inputting a command and when you're not, so you can feather out the yaw, but continue to go forward. That's really important if you want to get that smooth transition shot. And and with a, the typical controllers of today, uh, I don't know if this happens to you, but it, I'll, I'll admit it happens to me. If I'm going up with my left uh, thumbstick, I, I oftentimes will get a little bit of a left yaw. If I'm going yeah, forward with yeah. my right, I get a little yeah. bit of a right drift. That, yeah, that's not and it good. ruins it ruins the shot, absolutely. Right. Now you talked about some haptics, you know, in it, some some haptic feedback. What what uh, describe that to me because I haven't flown with it yet. But what kind of feelings do you get when you rotate or climb or, or you know, tell me about that? Right. So we we have uh, it, it's all spring driven stuff, but we have a really cool, uh, you know, patented, uh, heavily patented design that gives us the ability to give uh, a pushback force. So we we know when we've left the zero or center point of any degree of freedom. So as I push forward, I know I'm, I'm going forward. When I come back to zero, I feel a little drop in, in the force. And I know exactly what I'm doing, having to kind of look down at my hands or my thumbs or my pinch uh, joysticks to, to see what I'm doing. So I, 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 uh, I have a, this tactile feedback of what I'm imparting out on my drone and when I'm feathering out a certain command. So that's, that's really neat. If you're doing this, you know, kind of a, a reveal or an orbit, um, you, you know um, what's going into the stick and you know that you're not putting in any cross coupling or inadvertent motions. So the process here, we've got the drone actually turned on and it is uh, finding satellites right now, I'm sure. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the DJI remote control. Now it is connecting. And then finally, I've got the uh, my phone plugged in to the USB port here in the bottom of the remote control. So I'll go ahead and turn on the Fluidity app. So I'm gonna turn on the FT Aviator. You just push the button in the back and the four LEDs come on and you'll see it come on. And I am currently getting a, a magnetic interference error, and I, we moved to a different location. I was hoping that might change it. I did go into DJI GO 4 and actually um, go through and do a compass calibration, so it's not that. I don't think the on my actual remote control, it says GPS mode, ready to go. 
So, you know, I think that everything is good. So, uh, the, the program looks a lot like DJI Go. It's interestingly enough. And it is something that is, um, I'm sure, modeled after DJI Go 4. It's pretty intuitive. The stick is very intuitive as far as how you fly. You uh, pull the trigger to go up. You push the, push the thumb thing to go down. And you push forward to go forward, right to go right, back to go back, left to go left. And then the yaw is the rotation here. And the big, the big value add, as I've mentioned before, is this is supposed to increase your precision, the, the, your ability to fly in a precise way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the takeoff button. Okay, here we go. So it goes up to about four feet. It's kind of hanging out behind me there. I'm going to go ahead and roll video on the uh, on the device. Let's see, and you can do that here actually on the on the uh, remote itself. I'm going to stop using my phone and start using the remote. So now to t to go higher, I'm going to pull the trigger, and there is a nice feather to that. You can do it kind of slowly, or you can go fast depending on how far in you pull the trigger. It also kind of gives you a little bit of a display here on the actual uh, top of the stick that kind of tells you, it's just a little bit of feedback as to what you're doing. Like right now as I yaw right, it's actually telling me which way the drone is facing. Wow, that's cool. So if I'm facing that way, which I am now, this, um, this arrow is pointing that way. That's really cool. I had, I had no idea. Like if I want to straighten the drone out straight ahead, now it's facing straight ahead. Very cool. I like that a lot. I also want to show you real quick the uh, way this thing works in terms of the uh, yaw and the orientation of the drone. Right now you can see the white triangle is facing forward because the drone is facing forward relative uh, to us. Now as I rotate the drone, you see the white triangle is now down and to the left. The white triangle is now over to the right because the drone is facing right. It's facing about two o'clock. Now I'll face it back to 12 o'clock. Now I'll rotate it around to six o'clock. You can see it's right down there on the bottom. Now you see it's far enough away from us that this little red dot has come on. This red dot indicates where the drone is, uh, not oriented, but where it is in relation to us. Currently it's at about one o'clock and it's also facing at about one o'clock. If I push it over to the left, you'll see that red dot change to noon. And now it's going over to what would be, I guess, considered nine o'clock that's ten o'clock actually if I bring it back some it'll go to nine o'clock because it's to my left and you can see the red dot right there is lit up because it's over to the left and it's uh, right over there now I'm gonna take it all the way right go hard right with it and you'll see what happens it's gonna pass over us And once it gets on our other side, it shows up over here as three o'clock because it's over to our right. Um, there's a rate thing here that allows you to switch different speeds. So like I'm on two of five right now. So it's fairly slow, should be fairly smooth. And there I go. Up and out. And I should be climbing and going forward, which I am. Now I'm going to do a nice smooth yaw with it and turn in a big wide circle, continuing to climb. Wow. Yeah, this is my first time using it. Uh, as I said, Philip flew for about two minutes earlier, but wow, it's, uh, it's pretty intuitive, I have to say. It is a little bit of a pain that I have to have the uh, remote connected to it. If I had brought a longer lightning cable, I'd probably have the remote sitting on the ground or like clipped to my belt, you know, with one of these um, things. But, 
but right now I'm just holding it and it seems to be working fine. And also I don't really mind holding it like this. Like I'm keeping it kind of against my body, nice and solid here. Now the camera controls, you can tilt the camera. You can use this, oh I see, and you could just put your finger right here if you wanted to. You can do it at different speeds. You can go slowly, you can tilt quickly, and tilt straight down. So one thing, one thing I'm gonna try doing actually uh, is, is try doing an orbit with it because I'm curious to see if the orbit will be any smoother using this than it would with my normal RC stick. And again, I'm flying on two of five as far as speed goes, which is, I think, keeping it fairly smooth. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on three of five, just right in the middle. I'm gonna tilt the camera down, facing us, and I'm gonna see, uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit. And I'm actually gonna go up a little bit more because I wanna see if I can do a rotation and keep us right in the center manually. And I wanna make sure I don't hit those goalposts over there. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna see if I can, if I can uh, go right and yaw left at the same time. Yeah, it's really interesting to try and, there we go, that's the, that's the point right there, where yaw equals uh, travel, and it's keeping us right in the middle, wow. And I'm going really slow, and I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm only going slow because I'm in, um, because that's what I'm, because that's how I'm moving the stick. I could go a lot faster, I'm not like in a super slow setting. Let me back up and go a little bit higher, and I'll try to try to go a little faster. Yeah, once you kind of figure out what the what the twist to push ratio is, I'm going to copyright that twist to push ratio. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Now, if I wanted to climb at the same time, I could pull the trigger and tilt the camera at the same time. Yeah, it's a little much, but you know, with a little practice, you could get really good at all that stuff. Bring it down. There we are doing our thing. Now I'm gonna climb at the same time. Yeah, once you dial in a combination of moves, it's very easy to hold it in place. I guess because you're doing it with one hand and you're you're using different, um, you know, like my wrist and my finger together um, to do this. It's it's interesting. Tilt the camera up. Now, I'm holding down the down button, and uh, it doesn't land. So I think what you have to do when you get to this point, uh, when you're a couple of feet off the ground, it's not letting me go down any further because the downward sensors are saying, hey, there's ground there, I'm not going any lower. What you probably have to do in this case is hit the return to home button, and then say confirm landing and let it go down. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, so I've used the FT Aviator to fly the Mavic 2 Zoom, but I haven't tried the Mavic Air yet, so I'm gonna try that this morning. So let's check it out. There you have it, that's the FT Aviator. Um, did I enjoy flying it? Yes. Did it have some problems? Yes. Um, let me start with the problems. And those are, first of all, the little uh, device that you use to connect the phone to it, the little clamp. It's, it's just a pain to get on and off. It doesn't feel very solid or well built. I wish they would improve that, make it part of the body, make it fold out or something like that. But um, I wasn't a big fan of that, number one. Uh, number two, the software kept giving me a compass error even though there wasn't one. I had no uh, problems with the drone drifting or with it flying away, but I was getting a compass error, especially on the Mavic 2 Zoom. 
And so that was a little bit concerning, but I understand that can be fixed. Uh, that's a software thing. And then finally, the fact that you have to tether it to your remote control um, is a little bit of a hassle. Um, I ended up hanging it from the tripod, which worked pretty well when I was flying on the tripod and hanging it from my belt. But um, you know, once it's set up, it's not too bad. It's just that awkwardness of getting everything in place and getting the remote someplace set down because most lightning or USB cables aren't long enough that you can just set it on the ground. So you have to figure out a way to uh, have it there, have the antennas extended because it's talking to the drone. And quite honestly, uh, keep in mind, this is not a replacement for the remote control. If you're thinking about getting this to replace your remote control for a DJI drone, um, it's not the answer because it has to pair with the remote. So if your remote breaks, you still, um, you couldn't just buy this and fly with it. So that's a little bit of a downside. But the upsides for me, I love the little heads up display here that shows you where the drone is and the orientation, where it is relative to you and the orientation. I also just love the feel of it. It's really, uh, it feels very satisfying to push the stick forward and see the drone uh, dip its nose and start going forward. It's, it's a cool way to fly and I could definitely see if you're into flight simulators, if you're a pilot uh, flying fixed wing, it, it, it's a lot more intuitive. Now, as I said, I did take this out to a group at the Austin drone meetup and let several people fly it and didn't give them really any instructions, just handed it to them, said, here, you know, give this a try. And they all got it right away. Now, these are normal drone pilots. These are guys that fly DJI drones all the time. Um, so, you know, there's maybe a bit more advanced than your average person, but they didn't have any problem figuring out what it was. And once I explained the way the heads up display worked, um, they were quite impressed with that. I wanted to mention one more thing real quick. I did get a call from Ken Heron, who is also a drone expert and drone reviewer online. He has this device as well and is in the process of testing it. So he and I were comparing notes a little bit. He's testing it with his Phantom 4 Pro 2. Uh, it is the Phantom 4, um, the, the latest version of the Phantom 4 as of July 2019. And he had a lot of problems. He had a lot of problems getting it connected. He said um, the, the uh, actual uh, flight wasn't that great for him. Uh, I haven't seen his video and I know he's going to be publishing it around the same time I published this video. So I would recommend if you have a Phantom 4 especially or if you want to see kind of what an alternative experience was to go check out Ken's video flying this thing with the Phantom 4 and see what you think. Overall for me, I had a pretty good experience but again, um, it, your, your mileage may vary depending on the drone and maybe he just had a bad unit, we don't know. Uh, anyway, go check out his video, I'll put a link in the description. So, you know, in my opinion, it is something that if you wanted to fly something that was a bit more uh, different than the two-stick method and also really wanted to get down the, the um, synchronicity between the different movements to be able to do more cinematic moves, this could be worthwhile. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below. If you think this video was worthwhile, please consider subscribing to Ready, Set, Drone. Keep in mind, we are going to have the uh, company uh, that makes this at SpinUp, as well as giving one of these away. So if you can make it, love to see you, www.dronespinup.com. Once again, thanks for watching Ready, Set, Drone, and we'll see you next time.